<ride> allora, ciao Adele. Adele, stiamo entrando pian piano che così facciamo, ci, ci facciamo due chiacchiere in maniera la nostra, il nostro, così un po', capiamo un po' anche la vita dei, uh, della ballerina in maniera da, da farvi avere un'idea in più, no? Hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? Uh, <ride> Uh, I start with some questions for you, and uh, in this way the students can understand better your career, your life, and your personality, okay? Totally, that's fine. Ask away. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first thing we would like to know uh, well, how old you was when you started dance and your studies uh, of academy. Okay. So when I was younger, um, I was really fortunate that my mum had a dancing school and she okay. did modern tap, ballet, singing. Um, so when I was three until I was 16, I went to my mother's dancing school and I did extra ballet with another dancing school. So even though I wasn't going to a full-time um, professional um, every like you know like the royal ballet school or english national ballet school when i still was doing ballet nearly every single day so for me it was a very good way of practicing and i still had my childhood and my parents were there i didn't have to board and then i auditioned for um for com uh, not companies like professional schools when i was 16 and i got accepted into the english national ballet school And from then on, it was a huge transition for me, which was amazing because I loved dancing every single day. And I went from dancing every single day, about two, two hours maximum, maybe an hour and a half every single day, on a Saturday a lot more, and to suddenly all day, every day, I was dancing. <laughs> so for me, when I was 16, I absolutely loved it. And I was surrounded by people who loved ballet or so, And it, it, suddenly I went from this kind of level to seeing so much more, being around people who loved ballet. And it was, for me, it really opened my world and I loved it. And then um, the school obviously works with the company and we were doing um, Right of Spring by Kenneth McMillan. And suddenly they needed people to go in and it's a very tricky Stravinsky music the counting of all the numbers, and I, I loved it. I kind of got so excited by it. What was your world? <laughs> I, I, I loved every second. And because of that, and because I think I did quite well from a student to go in and do it, that's then when they gave me a contract. So I was extremely fortunate to not have needed to audition, And um, I, I feel very blessed that I, I didn't have the stress of this. I had it quite easy. <laughs> so. okay. uh, I forget a little bit in Italian for the people who don't understand. Definitely. Praticamente lei ha iniziato tre anni, ma non è una scuola di danza. Probably my voice is too bad, you know? Can you go a little bit lower with the volume? Yeah. Okay. Praticamente appunto, ha iniziato a tre anni, sua madre aveva una scuola di danza e ha iniziato a, già da piccolina, faceva modern, faceva tap, faceva qualsiasi cosa classico e tutte le, tutte le, le discipline. Praticamente dopo, verso i 16 anni, eh, quando è diventata 16 anni, ha fatto, eh, come si potrebbe dire, un concorso per entrare all'English National Ballet e in quel momento ha capito che il suo, il suo mondo, perché prima faceva un'ora, un'ora e mezza al giorno e dopo invece ha iniziato a ballare tantissimo, tutti i sabato, tutte le domeniche ballava tutto il tempo e, e si è trovato nel suo mondo, la musica piuttosto che il contare dei passi e questa cosa alla lunga poi l'ha fatta diventare proprio il suo sogno in realtà. In realtà, tra l'altro, lei è stata molto anche fortunata perché non ha avuto molta difficoltà di entrare, visto le sue doti. Ok, that's great. You know, uh, it's one, that's just some word for, you know, for give an idea for, for the people who don't understand, you know, so well. Definitely, that's absolutely fine, no worries. <laughs> that's great. Uh, uh, what's your, uh, how is your day uh, like a professional dancer? 
the the daily you know the daily uh, of a professional dance before before the quarantine of course yes before that um it depends really what level you are when i was called a okay. ballet you do class then you probably have rehearsals from maybe 12 o'clock until 2:30 then you have an hour break and then you have like 3:30 until 6:30 that's what mm -hmm. my life was like when i was called a ballet at english national ballet and then when you become a principal you tend to have um i would say more space depending on the repertoire but then what you do okay. is really like fuetes all the time to get better and the the work that you do is a lot more demanding um just because of the technique the pressure to make sure you you don't do it these these hard steps badly so that can depend on what repertoire so you can do class in the morning you could maybe have an hour and a half or two hours um in the middle of the day all the day in the theater you know from morning you know you do your break but you are all the time in the theater um at english national ballet you live in the theater all day every <laughs> single day like that is your home but in okay. munich at the uh, bavarian state ballet it's very different yeah. because you you have class, uh, your rehearsal can be for so so many hours but the way they work there is very different to the way english national ballet worked because english national ballet has a lot of shows so they need a lot of cast to make sure injuries happen they they need people as um yes uh, they are much faster they they go out yeah faster and um the very state ballet because there's less shows and because they don't have as many casts things tend to be a bit slower and you can talk about details more and certain things how things are going to work so both companies are very different and i've learned so much from both of them and i'm trying to retain everything i learned from english national ballet to keep and learn from bavarian state ballet and to then have a mixture Okay. Uh for first Chao Telma she is the international director of the auditions of Geoffrey <laughs> Ballet School of uh, Dallas and New York. Chao ah. Telma. Uh praticamente <laughs> praticamente diceva che ovviamente tra uh, English National Ballet e Hello. E poi Rishi sta male, praticamente di manna con Doriera, c'è molta differenza perché uh, in uno si lavora tantissimo, praticamente a Londra uh, in realtà vivono dentro, vivono in teatro quasi, sono tutto il tempo all'interno. L'altro invece, uh, siccome c'è un c'è un cast per ogni evento, invece magari nell'English sono fanno tantissimi spettacoli. Uh, guardano più i dettagli, hanno un po' più di tempo libero, uh, in realtà rispetto rispetto uh, in in Inghilterra. Uh, la sua giornata ovviamente dipende sia dalle variazioni che dipende da tante altre cose, che vuol dire che sta da mattina con le iniziali lezioni e poi con le prove nel pomeriggio. Uh, da quando è diventata prima ballerina lavora sempre leggermente di meno, perché è sempre quella questione che una prima ballerina non deve per forza uh, fare con il gruppo gli stessi movimenti perfetti. E, però eh, sono due modi totalmente diversi di lavorare proprio tra di loro. Ok. <ride> Amazing. And, ciao Marta, she's the the, oh. the prima ballerina of Scala of Milano, Mar Marta Romagna. Ciao Marta. You know, because they enter the curious curiosity, you know, for for you know for each other's uh, you know the life and the mode for for that. <laughs> okay, another question for you. Uh did you have some choreo who you who you are very in love uh, a variation, uh, you know, some choreography so, you saying yeah you be in love with that and you know when you when you dance that you be uh, so for for me i love i just I, to be honest i love jump dancing in general because okay. for for me i have really two sides of me um for me everybody sees me more as um somebody with strength and at english national ballet when i started everybody saw me as more like a meter character like strong can jump a good stamina um but there's another side to me that's a lot more vulnerable but maybe i i don't show it so much and mm -hmm. um so i really like to i really like somebody not to put me in a box and say oh loretta does this style 
I like to really try and push myself to be able to do the romantic, the strong, the technical, the acting, the every, every role I, I really enjoy. Um, oh. So you've got something like Spartacus. I've done both Agina and Frigia. So one is very romantic, very like vulnerable, and the other one is really strong, horrible person that is, it, is so in charge. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I, I just love it. Black Swan, White Swan, I don't have a favorite. Uh, I think okay. other people might have a favorite which they prefer on me, but I, I really, I love everything, so. <laughs> Praticamente le ho chiesto se c'è una coreografia piuttosto di qualche pezzo particolare che le piace, in realtà ha visto che assolutamente le piacciono entrambe. Uh, quando era in Inghilterra era, era, aveva un carattere più mil, mil, da militare, nel senso bella uh, tosta diretta lì, invece eh, ovviamente c'è anche un suo carattere molto dolce, molto romantico, molto, eh, è per questo che gli piace fare entrambe le cose eh, e ovviamente portare... Eh, portare questa sua personalità in tutte le due. Spesso chi è da fuori magari dice che sembra che preferisce una cosa piuttosto che l'altra, ma in realtà lei no, lei ha detto che sono entrambe le, le situazioni, sia il signor bianco e il signor nero, in certo senso c'è, in uh, certo senso. That's great, ok. You know, in this way we, we understand better. Okay. Did you have ever injuries and uh, how to get the turn back again? Uh, infortunio, you know what it means? Sorry. Say that again. The injuries. Did you have uh, ever injuries in yes. your career? Yes, yes. I've had um, a couple which um, I find when you're young, you're immature, you, you just want to dance, you don't listen to your body. So I had um, one stress fracture which I wouldn't in my left foot, uh, quite high up, it wasn't low. Okay. So it wouldn't catch all the time. I wouldn't feel it all the time because it was so high up. And I, would, I ignored it, ignored it. No, I was like, I do not have an injury. I don't. And it got so bad, I, I couldn't walk. So, yeah, I had to stop. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, we hear this story for many, many principal dancers, you know, because you love dancing, 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 and your body. Yeah, if you don't listen to your body, then, you know, it's a very, very big problem. Lei yes. praticamente non lo chiedo chi ha avuto mai avuto anche lei un infortunio, lei, anche lei nella piede sinistro, sempre dallo stress. Quando balli, 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 nonostante il corpo magari non ce la fa più, tu ti dai sempre dietro fin quando esplode. E gli ho detto che tante prime ballerine hanno questa cosa. Uh, did, uh, did you have uh, hobbies? Or, you know, that oh, yeah. is your dream. Did you have hobbies or passion in you know, different yeah. genres? I, I love to, I, I love art. I really enjoy okay. art. I like to do projects from time to time, but I kind of prefer it when somebody gives me a project to do instead of me thinking, oh, what do I draw? Um, but I, I always enjoy, um, because my mum has a dancing school, whenever I'm back in England, mm -hmm. I, I teach and I look at the company also that I dance with, with um, in Munich. And I can feel that I'm itching to, to help, to, to give. I don't want to, I don't, some people don't want help. They want to be like in a bubble. Yeah, more ego. Yeah, yeah. More and ego. so most of the time I don't say anything because I feel it's very personal. I don't want to, I'm not a teacher. I don't want to put myself in. But if anybody wants anything, I really, I want to help. I want to say maybe the coordination or maybe you should look like this and, i can feel that already my passion, I want to pass on my knowledge to other people and to, to get them to also express more. I find really ballet nowadays is very much, it's so much about technique. There's so much pressure to do those three pirouettes, those four, like the legs, everything. I feel now, nowadays the pressure on the dancers is so not only on them like this way, but also in your own head that you have yeah. to, to be good, you have to do three pirouettes. No, it's, <laughs> it, it, that doesn't mean it, maybe in competitions it's different, but when it gets to on stage, it's about what you're saying. What do you say with your legs? How do you turn? Are you going to turn fast on that bit or slow? Because it's, a, you know, there's so much information and I really want to think myself also. I do the step to say something, not 
because it's choreography. And I want to try and help with that. Yeah, that, that's important because uh, they, they can have the learning from the, the people, you know, from the dancer who do that every day, so that is more easy mm. for to understand. Praticamente dice che nel anche nel suo tempo libero ha visto sua madre una scuola di danza, e appena ha del tempo libero non è un insegnante, però le piace aiutare i giovani, anche quando va con la madre, uh, gli piace adora l'arte, e cerca in questo senso di insegnarvi quelle sensazioni che magari una ballerina mentre parla da fa, capito, dare proprio come il balance, piuttosto che altre cose, piuttosto che le pirouette, eh, farli capire che non è importante quanto ne fanno, ma a volte no. Anche certi consigli. Bravi. Eh, il consiglio proprio sulla questione proprio della, de, nel fare la cosa come ballerina in sé. Ok, uh, I have some questions for you, ok? They are fast questions. Ok. In this way you have just to give me some answers, fast answers, ok? Ok. Ok. Summer or winter? Your prefer? Which you prefer? Summer. Uh, mountain or sea? Sea. Uh, cinema or con uh, concert? Cinema. Uh, sweet or salty? Sweet. <laughs> Tolo or pas pas de deux? Sorry, sorry? A solo or pas de deux? You want to dance alone or with the partner? Solo. Solo, yeah. <laughs> uh, sweet or elegant dress? Elegant. Elegant. Uh, coffee or tea? Neither. I don't like it. What are you doing? <laughs> Film or, seri or TV, uh, serial TV? Say that again? Sorry. You like more the films, the movies, or serial TV? Um, films. Films, okay. Uh, sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Sunset. Uh, dog or cat? Dog. Uh, pizza or pasta? Ooh, pizza. Oh, yeah, we love to. <laughs> uh, running or bicycle? Um, running. Running. Um, ice cream or cake? Ice cream. We just buy it. <laughs> I told you before. <laughs> uh, uh, you like more romantic films or thriller? Romantic. Romantic, of course. We <laughs> Heels or sneakers? Heels. Uh, cars or motorcycles? Cars. Cars. Abdominals or push-ups? Abdominals. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Uh, city or countryside? Countryside. Okay. Uh, believer in God or secular? Um, I have moments. I believe in spirit. <laughs> okay. Well, that karma is important for you. Pardon? Did you believe in karma too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, introvert or extrovert character? Introvert. Introvert. iPhone or Android? Oh, I, I switch between. I have okay. no favorite. <laughs> okay. Important thing to do the job, okay. <laughs> uh, your, your preferred color? Um, blue. Blue. Uh, did you have a preferred singer and song? Um, no, I, I love all, all, music, all music, all genres. Okay. Uh, your preferred movie? Oh, um, um, Meet the Parents. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, which is the uh, the most beautiful theater for you, like uh, building? Okay, I have I have a couple. Um, the Royal Albert Hall, which is okay. is like a theater and a concert kind of thing, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, I really love um, the Bavarian State Ballet. Actually, okay. it's, it's very beautiful. Okay. Uh, your your preferred city? City, London. Uh, not London, of course. That's your city. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another city. Um, uh, Venice. Venice. Okay, we are 100 kilometers from here. Uh, I know. <laughs> Come on, to Venice. Uh, 
your 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 stylist, your preferred stylist, you know, of moda. Of of model. Um, I love um, Kate Middleton's, like what, she's not a, a, like a, just a fashion like style kind of thing, but mm -hmm. the way she dresses is very elegant all the time and I like elegant and pretty, okay. so. Me piace Kate Middleton come, And the brand, you don't have any brand? Do you no, I, I don't Thank mind. You. And the sport brand, not too, or like Nike, Adidas, or... No, I, I don't really, I'm not really sporty, but I do like uh, Lululemon, but it's very expensive. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, which uh, your user point shoes uh, brand is? I gain on Minden. Yeah, because you are ambassador of something similar, yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, your, your preferred book? Um, oh, um, a town like Alice, which is um, based in Australia. We are doing many questions who are not on the dance, okay? But it's just for you know the, your personality, you know, the people know you more better. Yeah, okay, no, it's fine. Cool. <laughs> uh, your purple flower? Oh, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Um, peonies. Okay. Uh, did you like sport? Yes, I do like sport. Which is your prefer? Um, I don't have what one I just prefer, but if I had to think, um, I I like I like I don't have one favorite one. Okay. But I, okay. My my family like a lot of um, golf. My my granddad. Okay, golf. Ah, that's good. Uh, the country for holidays. Oh, um, I, I would like to go on a safari, so I've yeah. been to many countries, but if I have to think of what I want to go, uh, Thailand and, and South Africa, I would like to go to in the future. Mi sarebbe piaciuto andare in Sud Africa e in Thailandia, perché gli piace il safari e cose varie, cosa gli sarebbe piaciuto fare praticamente in futuro. Um, did you have a dancer of the pump? Who was uh, your inspiration to be a ballerina? Yes, I have. Um, I had a couple of different ones for different, depending for different roles. Um, Svetlana okay. Zakharova, I really loved, and um, still do. <laughs> and um, also, Alina Kojikaru, really loved, loved her. Um, Tamara Rojo and um, Marinella Nunez. Mm, um, yeah. Right now, I really love also Maya Makateli. I think she is beautiful. Maya Makateli, um, that's not one. Yeah, I, I think I, for different, when, this, when I was younger, it was the others, but for now, I, I look at her and also I look at different people for different roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. We were in Amsterdam, I think, three months ago for me to uh, Anna Ol, Maya Makateli, and for a new collection. And uh, yeah, she they are, she's very, 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 very great for some yeah. roles. Okay. Uh, did you have a preferred choreographer? Um, to be honest, I really love um, Ashton. And I feel like I haven't done as much of his work as I would like. I really enjoyed La Filma Garde. It's so hard, so difficult, and it looks super easy and sweet, and it's not. It's really no. hard. Um, so I'd like to do more of his work, but also um, Macmillan, I really like. And um, some, there's not many ballets that um, Cranko did, um, okay. but um, definitely some of the ones that he did, I, I like also. So I really like classical ballet because I don't feel yeah. I suit um, contemporary stuff with my body. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why I prefer classical. Praticamente le piace molto più il classico, anche come coreografi, perché il suo fisico non è molto adatto al contemporaneo, perciò ovviamente riesce molto più meglio praticamente il classico. Ok, that's great. Um, somebody, uh, well, in the, when you be a uh, prima ballerina, no? principal dancers. Was more different uh, the connection with another dancers of the company, or was the same? You know, 
before when you was uh, solid yeah. when you were a ballerina? Um, when I was, um, I think it depends for everybody, everybody's different, but for me, because I was at English National Ballet, they saw me as a baby grow into a, profession, a principal. And yeah. for this, sometimes you can get, nobody's horrible, but you can feel people don't respect you as much as when you come in as a, as a principal. I think when okay. you come to a company as a principal, people are like, oh, she's a principal. They might be judging a little bit, but I find normally maybe it's just between the principal kind of area. Um, but I found that English National Ballet, everybody was very supportive. But when I went to Bavarian State Ballet, the, there, there was a complete difference because nobody had seen me when I was doing corps de ballet, mm -hmm. when I was working up. So I found that Bavarian State Ballet, they see me for me now. And yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it was very different. That, okay. Yeah, because they, they saw you when you was young. And, yeah. And you said that the difference between when you were a ballerina, uh, prima ballerina, depends on the situation. And the English National Ballet, since you were a little, they saw the whole process. E non in maniera orribile, però comunque mi sono un po' andati a giudicarla, sai, lei meglio, perché l'hanno vista in tante fasi. Invece adesso, nel Monaco di Pugliera, facendo questo, la vedono come la prima ballerina che è arrivata, perciò vedono quello che è adesso e non tutto il suo percorso, perché nessuno può giudicare uh, il suo percorso. That's great. <laughs> uh, you, you are married or fiancé, something similar with another dancer, yeah? With, uh, yes. How is the life when you have a dance in family and at work, you know, 24 <laughs> hours in the day, you know, uh, all the time? Uh, to and be honest, I really, I never wanted to marry a dancer. I was really against it. Um, <laughs> But my my husband, he he just he's really there? he's there. <laughs> so I have to be careful. No, <laughs> no um, he he just kept on talking to me, and things just kept on developing and keep on growing. And um, it for me, it's really amazing because he supports me so much, and he corrects me, and sometimes he's very hard on me but it's always to try and improve me and um to be honest i really love it i find there's no uh, there's no bad thing about being with him all day every day um i think sometimes it's just good to make sure you get other people's points of view because we're so similar i think if we were more different it would be fine but we're so similar that we kind of agree with everything. So it's quite nice to make sure you talk to other people, to get other opinions, to keep yeah, yeah, your brain in, in growing. So, more, um, more neutral, you know, more neutral from outside, you know, outside yeah. you. Okay, and uh, when, you, when you turn back home after, the, after your job, you, at the evening you continue to speak about dance too, or not more? Sometimes. Um, it depends okay. really on how we're feeling. If somebody feels low, one of us feels low, or oh, I don't feel good today. The, uh, normally, we're always like this. So when one is low, the other one is good, which is great. So we can always... Um, we can balance. <laughs> yeah, but I would like one time that we both feel good together. <laughs> okay. Um, so ah, okay, I just explained two, two seconds. I just said okay. It's coffee, it's coffee, my dog, yeah, it's my little, <laughs> Fine little. Wait, yeah. I have, I have a dog too, I have a pug. Ah, okay. <laughs> C'era anche lei uguale. <laughs> uh, praticamente diceva che, gli ho chiesto com'è la vita uh, stando insieme appunto con un altro padrino e anche lei diceva che intanto è così che aiuta, la critica, ma la critica per uh, praticamente migliorare in maniera positiva. Eh, a volte capita che anche a casa parlano di danza, non tanto, però di solito quando lei è giù lui è un po' più scusato di umore e viceversa, in questa maniera ti danno un po' mano a vicenda, anche se ogni tanto è bello parlare con le persone esterne perché così ti danno la possibilità di avere un, una vista neutra, neutrale da, da fuori praticamente, e possa darti i punti di riferimento in più. Ma lui è molto esigente con lei, a lei piace perché è una che tiene molto a migliorare. Ok, that's great.
Uh, another question for you. Uh, you are vegan, you eat everything, you know, um, I, you're I, I eat everything, also my husband eats everything. Um, we are not picky, we like sweets, every, every, everything. So um, it's, <laughs> it's very easy to go to restaurants or anything uh, like that. And um, we just have to just be careful of what we eat because we're both of us like probably um, more meaty things, which apparently are, you know, you have to just be aware. Um, okay. But when we're doing a lot of dancing, we can just eat whatever we want. Yeah, that's not a big problem because yeah. we eat everything. But right now it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a problem, I think, yeah. Praticamente le ho chiesto se mangia tutto e vegetariano, ha detto che sia lei che suo marito praticamente mangiano tutto, non hanno problemi assolutamente del genere, anzi in ristorante non si fanno troppi problemi. La cosa positiva è perché lavorando poi, uh, allenandosi tante ore in, uh, uh, con la danza, è ovvio che non è un problema. Attualmente in quarantena un po' più problema perché stando molto fermi uh, è diverso anche il metabolismo. That's great. Uh, did you have a future project for your life when you finish to be a ballerina? You have another many years mm -hmm. of career, but then you saw something to do, you will be you will no. like to stay with you or not to do yet. something different. We we uh, obviously I have a lot of passion for teaching. I feel like I really would like to do that. Also, um I don't know what it is to become like a director. Um, I don't know if I'm good enough or if I have qualifications, but um, I kind of know like the next three years, I'm just going to concentrate on my career. And after that, I know that I'm going to start to research and see what what to do and to try and, try and transition into. Um, to be honest, I'm a little bit stressed. <laughs> I don't really know because I, I love um, the art form. I love the passion and I really want to give to other people. Um, I don't mind either doing it uh, with the children because actually I think for children it's the most important level um, but it's harder when you're with uh, professionals you are you're working with the repertoire and you're seeing it done on a big scale and you're seeing shows so both do different things and um, I just hope that there will be a job to kind of transition into or um, We'll just see, but definitely but something. It's a waste in this world, yeah, in the dancing world. Yeah, I, I try to think maybe something else, but there's n I have no other passion or something that I'm an expert in. I feel like I cannot just pretend to do something else and I cannot just do a nine to five job. I need something that I'm passionate about. So definitely, I think either it will be to continue with my mum's dancing school or I create something that's more special with just classical ballet or if I work with a company or I would, I would like to be a, possibly a director to try and really um, nurture people and work in the good way that everybody's happy, which is impossible, I know, but um, <laughs> in, in just a, a good way for today's society, today's generation, so... Praticamente gli ho chiesto cosa gli piacerebbe fare dopo la sua carriera e mi ha detto che intanto per i prossimi tre anni ovviamente è concentrata nella, per la sua carriera e successivamente le piacerebbe comunque stare nel mondo del, della danza anche perché non ha altre passioni, perché la sua vita è questo, la, le piacerebbe diventare magari una, una direttrice di una compagnia piuttosto qualcosa di simile, deve ovviamente capire se ha le qualità o meno, però ce la metterà tutta, e, però vuole rimanere sempre in questo ambito. Ok. Uh, with, with, you know, very, very small, but in this way they have an idea. Um, did you have uh, Scaramantic, you know, you are Scaramantic or Lucky did you, before you enter in the... Oh. Uh, did you touch something you have, you know, not... No. My husband is. My husband always does something every single time. But for he, me, he's from two by two mal. It's like Italian, you know. We are very, uh, you know, passionate for that. We, we yeah. <laughs> no, for me, because I get scared that if I forget for any reason, if I'm late one day and I realize on stage that I haven't done it, the whole solo, I will be freaking out. I'll be thinking about that. So I, okay. I say to myself, don't do anything. 
and every single day is different with your body. So you don't have to do exactly the same thing every day. Some days your body, you have so much energy and that you're so, you've got so much energy, you need to calm down. And some days you're exhausted and mm -hmm. there's no point trying to push yourself to warm up too much because all your energy is going. So really for me, every single show I do, what I do before the show is very different. I, I really feel, what do I feel today? And just try to make sure I do the best show. And yeah, I don't do any, anything special. attaccati no? su queste di queste cose però in realtà lì no assolutamente uh, anzi quando va nel palco di solito uh, sente molto il suo corpo perciò ci sono giorni che spinge perché vede che ha molta più energia e altri giorni che si gestisce in base ovviamente alle sue forze alle sue cose eh, però e non deve essere per forza uguale ogni volta perciò ogni volta ok uh, for that you know it's a different way every time you know for you yeah. when you think it's not like yeah. Um, when I was a student, never. I never had this feeling. Um, even when I became a professional, I never had this feeling. Um, I have had it twice, though, and it's normally, um, normally pressure so much from other people that I maybe, maybe I didn't listen so much. And um, something that I've learned over time, I always wanted to, I've always wanted everybody to love me when I was younger. And if somebody okay. didn't love me or like me, I would try and change myself to make sure that they did. And mm -hmm. that after a while, you, you lose yourself. And if you try and change yourself and they do like you, but then suddenly they don't, for me, it was that negative that suddenly somebody I really respected didn't like me anymore and they were in a position of power. And for me, it really, it broke my heart because, you know, not every single show is gonna be amazing. Of course, as a, a principal, every show should be a good show because you're, you should be that level. Yeah, But there's some shows that are, that you just, are some shows that are special. And there's yeah. some shows that you, you're a human being, you have to learn from them and to make sure if there's something when you're younger, okay, you need to make sure you do something. And I've had a, one experience where really I was so devastated by the reaction of this person to me. I just thought, you know what, I, I, don't, I cannot do this anymore. And I realized oh. with time, that you really have to do it for yourself. You cannot do it for other people. And of course, I always did it for myself, but when somebody else said to me, that was so good. Oh, that's, that would make me, I, that would be the best reward, not the fact that I was like, oh, I did a good show. So that was one. And another one, um, I think was just talking about my weight a lot. Some people and some, um, some people in power, again, are just obsessed with, with weight. And okay. when they're always talking about your, your weight, it, it gets very negative and you, you start to go crazy. And you have to really stay strong. And sometimes you just think you're ugly all the time. You look at yourself and you think you're ugly because you have somebody else telling you over and over again. And that was a point where I was just like, i don't, I don't know if I can do this anymore. But then at the end of the day, I think, well, I, I, I do it because I love it. So you just have to learn to shut that out. And, uh, but you have, to, you have to be so strong, not just physically. I think what people don't realize is mental. You have to be mentally really strong. And I think every yeah, dancer has because issues. Usually, because you, usually the artists are very, you know, Uh, the sensibility of the artist is very high, you know, for that sometimes mm -hmm. 
let I, I do you the, the answer. Praticamente uh, diceva che gli ho chiesto di stare a mai qualche momento dove voleva molare. Ci sono stati due, ho detto. Da ragazzina non avevo problemi del genere, quello che quando ho iniziato comunque a fare da professionista, uh, c'è stato, praticamente davo talmente tanta importanza a dover piacere per forza a tutti, che ogni critica cambiavo me stessa per andare incontro alle critiche, ma questo mi ha portato che a un certo punto le persone che contavano eh, non mi apprezzavano più perché ero stata veramente modificata da me stessa. Eh, l'altra, l'altra invece è lì ha pensato, l'altro momento è praticamente riguardo sempre in posizioni anche di potere eh, nella danza e dicevano ri, riguardo il suo peso. Cioè, attaccavano sempre il suo peso, il suo peso, e lei si sentiva brutta, si sentiva praticamente impazzire, perché quando hai qualcuno che ti parla sempre della stessa cosa, e anche lì voleva un certo punto mollare. Però, pian piano poi, quando ho costruito il carattere, perciò diventa più forte, a un certo punto dice che stesso non mi piace ballare, io ballo più me stesso. E chi se ne frega, nel senso cosa pensa gli altri, ovviamente è una prima ballerina, perciò hai i riflettori addosso, e non può fare delle capito delle performance così così sono tutte buone, ovviamente ci sono anche quelle straordinarie, però da lì ha iniziato a non fregarsi a non pensare più che altro e non cosa dicono gli altri, perché ovviamente non può accontentare tutto. Ok, that's, that's great. Uh, which, your, what, which was your first var- variazione of uh, Queen of the Winter? Meta, Queen of the Willies was okay. my, my first. That's why I think a lot of people see me as this character. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, when you, when you do your, your first, yeah, your first exhibition, your first performance, uh, you were stressed or you just was quiet? Oh, for me, it was a bit... Um, this performance only happened because so many people were injured. Um, I had been dancing with the company six months. Um, I wasn't supposed to do this role, I wasn't asked to do this role, but I was quite depressed going from school to, um, to company life, because at school you are a big fish in a small pond and then the company is so much bigger. So I went to rehearsals and watched every single rehearsal or meter when I joined the company. And I think when so many people got injured, maybe, maybe they noticed that I was there and I had learned everything by watching. So one day they asked me, can you just do it? See, see how you are. <laughs> so, so people, yeah? <laughs> I, yeah? I had to do after class in front of everyone, just suddenly. And they kind of said, okay, um, in two days, oh, no, in four days, um, we want you to do Mirta. And I was like, oh my God. And I think I had um, maybe two or three rehearsals um, before, and I just did it. So I was very stressed because I knew all the choreography, but no mime. No of the mimes telling him that you're going to die. I didn't know the order. And thankfully, one other dancer who does Mirta said to me, she wrote it all down for me on a piece okay. of paper, and in the show she was side stage also to help me. <laughs> so after... Yeah, it was t- amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. To, to be honest, I look back on this moment and I'm like, wow. It was, it was yeah. really amazing. Are the biggest satisfaction of the life, you know, when you, when you do something special, you know, from nothing, you know, you start yeah. that. Le ho chiesto qual è stata la sua prima tradizione, diceva che è mia e, e tra l'altro era da sei mesi che fa da professionista. Era un po' giù di morale, eh, perché comunque ha lasciato l'accademia dove, uh, cioè come prima ballerina, perché aveva lasciato l'accademia dove è tutto più tranquillo, tutto più familiare, invece nel professionismo in compagnia è tutto più grande. E, era lì e guardava praticamente tutto quello che facevano. Si sono infortunati quasi tutti e in automatico gli hanno chiesto vuoi farlo tu? Ma lì non aveva neanche provato praticamente, ha fatto quattro giorni di prove e siccome non sapeva le sequenze che le presentate gli hanno scritto su un, su un foglio e allora ballava al guardando però in realtà si è trovato da, da lì dove guardava praticamente a, a diventare una protagonista perché gli altri si sono infortunati cioè alla fine è il fatto, no? quando succede il destino, il destino 
e quando si ricorda di quel momento così un po' pazzoide, no? così, gli viene ancora un sorriso proprio perché se lo gode. That's great, really. It's, it's very, it's very nice history, you know? When we yeah. do the collection, I, I tell about this, you know? Because we tell the story of every dancer and yeah. they take this, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for explaining to the people, yeah, because that, that's great. For this, we, we have those questions. In this way, we know better the The, the story of each dancer, yeah. of each musical dancer, and when we have to talk for them in the, uh, the collection, uh, we have to, we dedicate five minutes to every you know dancer yeah. for every uh, group of the people coming. Okay. Uh, like when you be in a museum, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know we wouldn't like to tell for everyone uh, the the most sympathetic or the most crazy things you know the career too. Of course, their life and. Different. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, did Did you have somebody in your life who try to broke uh, to broke your career, or you know, to put you down? Another dancers or somebody uh, um, with you or something similar? Yeah, I think I think everybody has a little bit of this because everybody wants to be. Everybody, I think most dancers want to be a, a principal. So, but of course, not everybody can be a principal, and other people, um, not nobody's perfect either. And in this art form, uh, it's to our personal taste. Somebody might be a principal, and everybody thinks that she deserves it, or he does. But there might be a couple of people that think, for me, I don't see what everybody else sees. So I think there there will always be some people that are a little bit um, jealous, um, but I think from what I compare to my husband to myself because of our lifestyle, I think in England maybe there's more jealousy than he he's from Cuba, and in Cuba I think even though they're all amazing they have a different I feel like they have more of a camaraderie they always. Um, yeah. He always competes with himself. He never ever looks at somebody else. He never ever com um, criticizes or complains. It's all just to do with himself. As my younger, the way I've been brought up, I, I did a lot of competitions, which for me was really good because I improved by seeing other people. And for a long time, I never won. I, it was very hard, so it was good to to get used to the knocks that happen, which happens in this career, in life, for everyone in general. Um, so the competitions were very, very good, but it automatically gives more of a competitive, more of a jealous, you're either up or you're down. There's no middle ground. So okay. the, from what I've seen, I've learned that always, also my teacher from um, a different dancing school was quite competitive also. And she would be quite open in the fact, oh, you are better than her. And so for my young, the way I've been brought up, I've seen a lot of this competitive. Um, and I feel in general in London or in England, there's, it seems to be more like this. Um, but I think it's very good to be aware of it and to make sure that you don't go with this because it can... It can be a good thing if you're very controlling of it, because if you see somebody that's really good at something, yeah, you, you, it, it's actually very healthy. But if it gets out of control, you have to be really to make sure that you, you lock it down because it can really it can destroy you. So um, I think it's all about making sure that you, like you control your body, like making sure you control your discipline every single day with what you do. You also have to control your, your mind to make sure that if you are surrounded by people that are competitive and aggressive, you have to really make sure that you don't be become them or, or it's like, a, you, you just have to be aware, I think. And um, with my husband, it's been great. He really, because he's somebody that is opposite. So okay. for me, I live with somebody who's really mentally very, very good. And it has gone into my blood and I feel much happier person and dancer since I've been with him. You think this is a cultural, yeah, more? Because maybe in the country, yeah. people, these are more, you know, for themselves. And I think so. 
Okay. I'm going to discuss it with him later, actually. I want to know his opinion on if he okay. feels like that or if it's just him. Um, okay, okay. So, yeah. eh, praticamente gli ho chiesto se ha mai avuto qualcuno che ha cercato di, di ostacolarla, ha detto quasi tutti, cioè praticamente in realtà succede quasi sempre, soprattutto ai livelli alti, tutti, tutti vogliono diventare i primi ballerini, uh, nelle compagnie, persone che qualisti, vogliono tutti, hanno visto no, per, quel, uh, per, quel, uh, per quel ruolo. E praticamente è sempre molto molto difficile, eh, perciò nonostante dopo che sera 20 magari non piace a due. Uh, ci saranno sempre quelle geologie, quelli che ti parleranno male, è, è molto competitivo perché comunque a livelli alti è veramente dura. Magari è diverso col suo marito, diceva che lui di solito la competizione la fa con se stesso, uh, forse una mentalità appunto è una, una questione culturale o non si sa, lui la fa con se stesso, invece soprattutto in Inghilterra sono molto gelosi piuttosto che hanno sempre questa criticità tra di loro. Eh, per arrivare veramente a livelli alti è molto veramente difficile. Ovviamente questa cosa, se sai controllarla, eh, diventa una cosa positiva perché ti, ti stimola a fare sempre di più. Se invece non sai controllarla, ti mette capo perché ti, ti, ti mangia vivo, no? Perché comunque a volte mentalmente, e allora lì devi proprio chiudere tutto e tab fare tabula rasa. Ok, that's great. Uh, the last question for you is, uh, did you see differences between the audience in Italy, in uh, Germany, in England, you know, um, the audience, you know, the people who come in the theater. Uh, did you see the difference or they are always the same? Um, I do see a difference, but not so much um, each country. I okay. see uh, more like, um, I find in England, um, they're a lot more reserved. Like okay. they, they might inside, they might go, oh, that was, that was brilliant, but they would just clap nicely. Maybe at the okay. end, they will clap more. But okay. because I know myself that everything is, you, you never go like, oh, wow, amazing. Like <laughs> this, is, this is normally, you, you say it, but it's something that I realize myself that sometimes I say things, but in my head, and I have to communicate that to other people that they don't know what I'm thinking. So it's something that I've learned myself. And um, I do find generally in other countries, they just seem to be better than England. <laughs> <laughs> America, they always give so yeah, much. Yeah, they're crazy. They, yeah. Yeah, they, Cuba also. For them it's a show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. And Cuba also, really like amazing. And also in Spain and Italy, um, I, they're not... They're not the same as America. America is another level. It's like a concert. Um, it's not, yeah. it's not a, a ballet show. <laughs> um, no. in, in Munich, I find Munich, because it's Bavaria, they're very different to the rest of Germany. Oh, and Germany, in Munich, yeah. they, they seem to adore, absolutely adore, especially the opera. They really like theater. Mm. And um, from my upbringing, everywhere I go, people don't, dress up so much for the theatre that I've seen. But in Munich, they, they really do, and they really are very appreciative. And from what I've spoken with Vienna, um, um, Toppy, uh, in, yeah. in Milano, they also, they, they really dress up. But of course, okay. I haven't danced there, so I don't. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I do feel a difference, definitely. Um, But I, I don't know, there's something about maybe because I'm English and I feel I understand here that I, now I've come back, if I ever perform, I do feel an extra warmth, but I don't know if that's just me thinking that is better. But to be honest, I, compared to other countries, England doesn't, doesn't give so much back. So much calor, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, because I think it's just their personality. They're more... Yeah. About America, you know, I spoke, uh, I think, last week with uh, Martin Arduino, the, the principal dancer of Scala, or with yeah. uh, Vierna. Yeah? He told me when they were in a tournée in Australia, they do kippy, you know, don donkey, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, for laughing or that, all the audience in the middle, you know, they, they, they laugh ah, ha, ha, all the time. Yeah. It's crazy because we never saw these people, you know. It's like America or Australia, they are really very open. 
they yes. are like you know, like a cinema, like concert. It's not uh, you know, it's not that the magic, the magic moment of the theater who usually in another country would be. For that, yeah. it's, it's really. It's, it's very different. Diceva, Uh, praticamente gli ho chiesto appunto tra uh, Inghilterra piuttosto che altri paesi in cui anche fermato che in America sono, è tutto uno spettacolo, non so, perciò applaudiscono uh, di tutto di più. In Inghilterra in realtà è il paese che sente meno questo calore perché proprio, forse perché li conosco, forse però proprio in più da altre cose sembra che abbiano più... Dai, sono più... Eh, oh, ultimamente quando entra in Inghilterra per qualche esibizione c'è un po' più di calore ma uh, comunque sia sembra sempre meno rispetto agli altri paesi anche in Bavaria che è, dota- è un po' diverso ma non per dire che è un po' diverso dal resto della Germania eh, c'è questa adorazione nei loro confronti soprattutto nel confronto di Otto dell'opera ma in generale è un po' più rispetto all'altra Germania è un po' più calorosa in Baviera Okay. Uh, we spoke about the tournée. You told me the first one was in Singapore, your prefer, one of the, um, the tournées you remember with more pleasure. And also uh, Japan, obviously, because in Japan they love ballet um, to another really? level. And you feel like a movie star. <laughs> There, it's like really, um, it's, it's and, really uh, a special think, place. I think Japan have that beautiful theater that's like uh, orange or something. You know, Kawabanka, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but they, they, they so bring with the dance like the movie stars. Yeah, uh, that's, that's really great. Okay, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank It's you. most important for us. In this way now, uh, we, meet, we make this in uh, Facebook too and for the other students. Because may, I told you many of them wasn't here. They don't have this possibility for now. For that, they saw yeah. it after. And uh, really, really very much for your time, for your lesson, for your uh. answer, um, for your experience. And I really hope in the future to have you here personally, maybe to do the holiday symphonies and your Exactly. And, uh, and thank you for asking me, and I really appreciate it. And I hope that I can visit. Yeah. That'd yeah. <laughs> This way you enjoy and we can do some master classes personally with you here. Definitely. Okay. Really, really thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Ciao.